Hello everyone, bringing you a video today in a format which I've not used for a while, which is the one man skip videos. Uh, this is looking at, of course, a, 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 a British soldier uh, in the early days of Operation Banner in 1969. This is to provide something of a contrast to a video I've previously done, a one man skip video looking at British soldiers in Northern Ireland in 1972. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting to look at how the kit evolved, and I probably will do videos looking at the later kit, the 80s kit, and possibly into the 90s. Um, we'll see about that, but I thought it would be interesting to look at this. Um, the kit in 1969 uh, and the uniform worn varies on time of year, of course, the specific unit involved, uh, the area and the duties they were being employed upon. So this is a specific example, uh, which is a private in the Prince of Wales' own, the 1st Battalion Prince of Wales' own. And uh, we'll take a look at the kit now and the uniform that's being worn at this uh, time period. This is taken directly, essentially directly from a photograph. So as already said, this is to represent a private in the Prince of Wales' own uh, in August 1969, um, so 50 years ago, essentially. Uh, the basic uniform you can see here is a stripped down version of the combat uniform worn in shirt sleeve order with a very light belt kit, uh, as you can see, and the combat helmet and respirator uh, carried basically for public order duties. The belt order worn includes the belt from the 1958 pattern web equipment, a left hand ammunition pouch which supports the bayonet for the self loading rifle which is the weapon carried. As can be clearly seen in this side view the sling of the rifle has been looped around the wrist to prevent the rifle being snatched away from the soldier. And on the right hip the water bottle pouch is carried. You can see the contents of the belt order here with the spare magazine for the self loading rifle and the bottle and cup associated with the 1958 pattern equipment. On the chest, the respirator haversack is worn, and this is a somewhat antiquated design, the Mark VI, dating from the Second World War. Uh, Mark VII's are also seen in period photographs, and these were presumably used, or appear to have been used, to carry the S6, uh, due to a lack of the new uh, green webbing haversack, which had been introduced for the S6. Here we have the Mark VI respirator haversack, and as you can see, this is the side that would be worn against the body. And in the main compartment, we have the S6 respirator. As you can see there, this is a 60s example, which I really need to give a clean, uh, really really need uh, to uh, have a go at with a, with a cloth and give it a clean up, um, 64, as you can see there. And if we actually look at the, the haversack itself, you can see inside, if we get some light in here, you can see the internal divider here has been cut. Now, obviously this would originally be the canister to go on one side and the face piece on the other, uh, for the general service the second world war general service respirators uh, but it's been cut to allow uh well it could have been cut for many reasons it's possibly been cut for this to be used as a bag uh in civilian use but certainly the some of these older respirator haversacks were definitely used in the early days of operation banner to carry uh s6 respirators um, both mark six VI and mark seven uh, are seen in period photographs headwear consists of the mark four steel helmet uh, painted essentially with vehicle paint at this time, which gave rather a glossy green finish. The basic uniform consists of the 1964 pattern uh, wool flannel shirt. Uh, earlier patterns of shirt were also seen at this time, uh, and it would not be long, of course, until the, the uh, khaki flannel, the later patterns of khaki flannel shirt associated with the 1968 pattern combat uniform would make an appearance. The trousers of the uniform are from the 1960 pattern combat suit, and you can see details of these here. And footwear consists of DMS ankle boots, of course, one with wool putties wrapped around the ankle. In terms of underwear, we can see here a pair of civilian Y fronts, uh, often substituted for the rather uh, unpleasant issued underwear, and a pair of polyester socks. The British Army had moved away from wool socks in the 1960s, uh, which is arguably was not the best of choices, as polyester is not a great material to make socks from. If you sweat into them, they uh, can do some damage to your feet, but this was the move that had been taken, a, way, a move away from natural fibres to man-made fibres. In terms of identification, the soldier has not only the ID discs, the metal ID discs worn at the neck on a piece of nylon cord, he also carries an identity card in the pocket of the shirt. And here we have some period photographs from 1969 showing uh, troops in, these orders of, in this order of dress, shirt sleeves with a very light belt order, and you can see here the antiquated designs of respirator have a sack being used and a mix of S6 and light anti-gas respirators were in use at this time. So there we have an overview. As I say, tip, fairly typical for many uh, British soldiers employed in Ireland in 1969, in the summer of 1969. 
Uh, obviously on other duties, body armour would be worn, full combat uniform would be worn in colder weather, um, or perhaps the wool and the uh, jersey heavy wool. Uh, as I say, it really depends on exactly which troops you're looking at and what exact time period during the year and what duties they're employed upon. But this is an overview of a, a soldier in the summer of 69 uh, in Northern Ireland uh, on public order duties. So there we are. That was a look at sort of early Operation Banner Kit, uh, very much the 60s, the British Army equipped for the 1960s, and obviously some bits of old kit being used there for want of anything else. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. As I say, I'm probably going to continue going through uh, doing different videos on different periods of Northern Ireland. It's very interesting how the kit evolved um, and uh, how the, the uniform uh, was was designed and developed. Well, items of body armour and so forth were introduced and designed and re you know developed through the time period um, and how the uniform was worn differently uh, to try and give different... Um, a different perception of troops and so forth, which are also quite an interesting element of it. So I do hope you found the video uh, interesting, as I always say. Uh, if you did and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Uh, and whether you're newly subscribing or you've already subscribed, do make sure you've clicked the little notification button, the little bell down below the subscribe button. Um, that uh, will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. Uh, there's also a Facebook and an Instagram page associated with the channel, which are both linked in the description. Good places to keep up with what's going on and see more photographs of the kit and so forth. Um, but that's everything I want to cover in this video. So until next time, bye for now.